Hello everyone, this is Caliber Mansk, and I'm going to show you my new leaderboard script that has just come out. Um, it's really easy to use, so I'll just go ahead and show you. Just import the package and browse to it. And that's my package right there. And it'll ask you to import all of this stuff and just go ahead and do that. And inside is this script, with the display leaderboard script, which will output everything into a table for you to view. And then the submit leaderboard script, which is just a basic GUI to submit scores to your leaderboard. Um, they're really easy to use. You just simply drag them onto any object on the scene. They use GUI elements. And that's all you have to do besides changing the URL and the key. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you that my database is empty. Yeah, nothing in there. And then you have to upload all the PHP files that are in this folder, those four, to your own web server. I'm just going to connect to my website, make a new folder. go into it and then upload the files. And those are uploaded. Um, I'm using Unity 3 so I have to go to my base folder and also upload the crossdomain.xml. Uh, this is a new thing that they added in uh, Unity 3 for security reasons so that you can't access information from other people's websites without their permission. Um, it, all you have to do is just upload it and that's it. Okay, that's all we have to do in our FTP program. So we'll bring up that web page now. So this is the install page, uh, it's quite simple, it just asks for all the information that you would need to connect to the database, your unique key, uh, the database prefix, and the number of values that you want in the table. Uh, the database prefix is just simply a way that you can have multiple leaderboards in the same database. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So I'll just type in my server, the username the database that you want to connect to inside of that and then the password now the key I'm just going to use a simple my key and then the prefix I'm going to use racing just as an example and then the number of values I'm gonna say it's gonna be a game maybe kind of like Mario Kart but you get a score for it so we would have the username, the score, the time, and the level that it's on. So that's four values. And then you just hit submit. And it went through, it created the database connection information and the disconnect information. It created a table inside of the database for the hash code for the checking for the key and all that kind of stuff. And then it also created the scores database for it to get the information from. And that's all we need to do there. Um, you do want to delete the install.php file afterwards off of your 
web server because otherwise anyone could go into it and change the scoreboard to or the leaderboard to look at their own script, their own database, that kind of information. So I'll just close out of that now. And I'll show you this database was completely empty. And then I'll hit home, log in again, and it should have both yep. racing the check, which is just for checking while it's uploading the scores. You know the hash it holds the hash information and, and the timeout. Um, I have the timeout set to 60 seconds, so if the score isn't uploaded within 60 seconds of getting the hash code, then it's not going to upload the score. And then you have your scores, which is also empty. And now we can go back into our game. And then type in our new URL. Copy that, paste it down here, and we'll enter our key, which was just my key. And then we'll have the values to submit. Uh, by default, I just did four, just like I already told you, the score, time, and level. And something that I did is when you run the script here and then enable it, this will be the default screen, and then you just type in your username, and then what you can do is instead of just physically typing in the scores or using your own scripts to modify this script, you can simply just call a command. It looks to see if this is a command or not. So if you had like a script that was called globals, and you had your scores in there. So this is the score, so we just do score, and then dot two string, and it'll look through for a static script. Okay, during the editing process, I found out that the video file got a little messed up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue where I was. Um, I saved the level and redid everything because I was running it. So these changes will actually stay. <clears throat> and all you, you can just run the application dot loaded level name and it'll upload whatever the name of the file is from the editor and then down here we have the end submit action and that will run at the end loop of submitting it's the button after the submitting of the score so we'll submit a score real quick on and then just now there's already going to be a score in there because I already did this before and I'm re-recording it but what that does is it run this button here runs whatever that is so you can tell it to run your own script you can have it just exit stuff like that in my case it reloads the map to level zero which in this case is just the same level Um, now we'll go to displaying it, and all you have to do is turn it on, and as you can see, it's all there. Um, I messed up the first time, and it's globless instead of glo globals. So you have to watch yourself on that. Just test it out a few times before, you know, fully putting out the game. And you can resize the cell width, which is just the spacing between each of the different cells of information. Uh, I have an exclusion list here as you can see ID is there by default so I'm going to set it to zero and it'll show and refresh it and as you can see it shows the IDs of the username well of the score submitted. If you wanted to say not show the time because you're just viewing the scoreboard not the time trial you can get rid of it with just typing in whatever variable it is and then refreshing and it's gone.
Uh, both of these use a padding system by default, so instead of being you know, only 20 pixels wide by 20 pixels tall, it's 20 pixels off the edge. If you wanted it to be 200 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall, you could do that and then just uncheck the box. You can also just drag it to see what value you want and go from there. You can also change how many you're viewing, how much it's offset by, and the direction that it's going.